watching Notes and Nine. Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 188, adding a please wait to X pages. If you're going to load data, might as well be lazy about it. Okay, uh, just real quick uh, in this show, I used a couple resources from some some really smarter than me people. Uh, and number one is a uh, Frederick Norling, um, who has an X snippet on OpenNTF. And if you don't use X snippets, uh, you should. There's a lot of really good code there. Um, and he's for the longest for a long time he's had the standby dialog custom control. Um, and I just saw just tonight in doing this show, he has a he has a a new one for Bootstrap. I didn't even know about that one, so I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, but if you go there, and here's the link. Um, you can get that control, and it does a partial refresh hijack of everything, uh, which sometimes you might want, sometimes you might not want uh, everything, and sometimes you might want to target things. Uh, but it's, it's really good code, and it, it does um, um, help out a, a lot when you're doing um, uh, some processes, and you don't want like the user to click two or three times on when they've got to wait. And, and this other one um, is a great blog post. I've referred to it many times. Uh, it's, it's back in 2012, and, and I really know this person, uh, Vikas Tawari, uh, I hope I pronounced that right or so, um, was the source of this blog post, um, uh, the, the, the second half of the demo, uh, where we talk about more the full, what to do about a full page refresh or the, or the initial load screen. Um, so uh, please refer to those if you have any questions on that. Uh, they're, they're great contributions from community members, and that's, that's always a great thing to see. Okay, so uh, there's not much to say. We're going to talk about improving the ui um basically when you when you're doing a partial refresh and it might take a couple seconds and stuff like that um and also on the um if you're loading a page that you have to collect a lot of data and it's you know it's going to take a couple moments to load um to throw up like a nice uh please wait message screen while you're doing that um so with all that being said let's go to the demo okay so here's a uh crappy uh, little X page that does something even dumber. Um, here's, I'm showing the time, and when I click this, we're gonna, it's gonna run some code that's gonna take a little while, and then it's going to do a partial refresh of the time and hopefully increment the time. Okay, and here's what we do. We click it, and you don't see anything. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it goes. Well, that kind of sucks, right? That's not good UI for the user. Um, that one, they could click again and again, which actually could cause some problems and stuff like that. Um, and, and there's no visual representation on what's going on here. So let's go over to page two and uh, try it again. So we're going to click on do something. Okay, so now we've got this little standby thing going on um, that's at least preventing us from clicking on it again and letting you know that something's going on. So that's, that's, that's pretty good. So let's see how that works. Um, in page two, there's nothing really to look at in page one, but in page two, um, in here, so I've added this res uh, the, the resource here. This is just for my uh, little code that does all the, you know, sp spitting. This allows me to use this waste time function, so nothing, nothing too big there. Um, but what's kind of interesting in here is, is I have this standby dialog, which I just dropped on the page. Okay, so that's, you know, right here. Um, so it's just, you know, a custom control that I made that I can just drop anywhere. Um, and if we look at the custom control, um, I didn't really even make it. I just got right from OpenNTF. Uh, it was made originally by Frederick Norling. Um, and it's, again, it's not targeted. So it catches any partial refresh on the page, which actually can be a bad thing uh, sometimes. So sometimes you do want to target them. But if you just want to go kind of quick and easy, a shotgun approach, then this, this works really well. Though I did have a problem with this uh, at one point when um, I think it was iOS 9 just came out. I don't know if it's if it's been fixed or been changed or so, but inside a, a, a bootstrap app and iOS nine on Safari, on like the iPad web browser, I think it was um, having this control on the page somehow for some reason affected zooming uh, or so. So I had to remove it and do a little more targeted approach, which I don't have the demo of that um, here today. Um, but more often than not, this has been working well for me. So just be careful with it if you do use it. But it is on OpenNTF, and and hopefully uh, that's in the slides that I uh, will produce after I, I record the demo, um, the link to that. Um, but that's basically it. So you drop that on, and any kind of partial refresh, it catches. So uh, a good, nice, easy way to add that to your pages um, uh, if you need it. Now, a little more interesting, and, and the reason I'm – I'm doing this video today is, is someone posted about this in Stack Overflow on how to um, 
kind of like what about what about non partial refreshes? What about like your initial loading screen, uh, for instance? Or I think he said full refresh, but uh, I'm going to talk about the initial loading screen. Um, so if I go to page three here, you see it's running, and it's running, and it's wow, this website sucks. It must be Dave's. Uh, but here it goes though, at least. So we we get there at least. So there was a lot of processing went on in my fake names database to tabulate whatever it is I, I tabulate I forget or so but uh, again that was kind of brutal because you, you don't know what's going on here so that's where you might want to start thinking about the time to first bite uh, as, as Declan Lynch calls it and, and that is basically don't do all this processing until the user at least gets the screen set up so they know what's going on so you've seen that approach now if we go to page four Wow, okay, so right away we get our UI. Of course, there is none, but if I had some, it would be here. We get a nice little message here that's saying uh, it, it'll take a couple moments. Um, so if I had a real web page here, you know, with a frame and navigation, so that would load first instantly. And then um, after the load, it would start kicking off and processing the data. Okay, so that's probably a better UI. You know, page four is a better UI approach than page three. So let's see how page four works. Okay, so page four, what we're doing here is, is I'm loading these two uh, Dojo modules, um, this this EXT Live and this Digit Loading. Okay, and this this is kind of irrelevant. And App CSS, I don't think there's anything of of real interest in there. It's a real podcast. We're gonna check that first. Um, okay, there 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 actually is something in here. I'm sorry. So I do have a little little. Um, hide thing to, to hide something which we'll look at that in a, in a second here um, so if we come down here to this page um, I've got a before page load and in the before page load the the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, or the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a, a view scope variable that says view scope has data I'm going to set it to false so as the page loads I'm setting a flag that's saying yeah there's there's no data available to it okay um, and you'll see that in a minute. So then I've got a couple nested panels. If I can, that might make it look better. And inside the the inner panel, this main content, then I'm reading this view scope variable, and it's saying false. So don't render this main content panel. So as soon as this page loads, it says to itself, "Well, don't do anything." Okay. So this because this is where all the work is. So don't do that work. Um, and the work is a repeat control. That's that's you know getting its data and, and stuff like that. Um, so what's going on here is after this does not load, then it comes on and then it runs the on client load. And the first thing that this does is it, it first, it does this on start. So XSP start Ajax loading, and you can actually put your own message in here, calculating state totals. This may take a few moments and then it runs the function, uh, get state totals. Okay, and again, that's kind of irrelevant here. Uh, but what get state totals does, I, I guess it's a little relevant, is it does all its work and stuff like that. And the last, notice I even recycled. I remember to do that. Wow, that's impressive. Um, so the last thing that it does is is it puts in the view scope its own data because that's where I read it from the repeat. Um, there's no Java crap here. Um, but it also then says has data is true. Okay. So, so it, it runs this function and then when it's done, it puts the view scope back. It changes this one here to true, which will then render this panel, which has the repeat in it. Okay. And then on the on complete and on error, we call XSP and Ajax loading, which gets rid of, you know, this, the little div overlay that, that it did, um, with that message and stuff like that. And that's, let's look at that one more time, and that's just how it works. Okay, so it's loading, it's loading, it's loading, view scope is false. Then it's going to get the data, set view scope to true, the complete stuff runs, and you've got your data, whatever it is. So I think that's, uh, I've used it a couple times in production now, I think that's kind of a good way. If you have a page where it is going to take a couple moments to load or so, at least, you know, be nice to your user and manage their expectations of when that data should be there. And that's the demo. I uh, hope you like it. If you have any questions for me, here's my contact information, and I thank you for your time.